Uh, we're now going to move on to our next speaker, Danny Ma. Danny Ma is uh, at the University of Cambridge. He's been working for um, quite some time on how you can federate various kinds of trees. Trees are various uh, methods that allow us to build a model that is not a neural network based, but is uh, much more akin to things like XGBoost and even to a degree like decision trees. Um, so he is going to now talk to us about uh, his ideas and how you can do this and do it in a way that's even more privacy preserving. So again, thank you, Danny, for um, taking part in Flower Monthly uh, this time around. Yeah, thank you, Nick. And I will share my screen. Yeah, so, um, so now I'm only sharing my slide, but not a full screen. So let's see if this uh, will work. Yeah, sure. For the first 15 minutes, I will give a brief, a brief overview of uh, why we need actually boost and what is actually boost and our new development method. Then for the last five minutes, I will give like a short short demo on our code and how to run the code to train the federal actually boost. And so first, I will talk about our motivations. So existing effort research mainly focus on neural networks. For example, if we think about the mainstream strategies like federal averaging and the FedProx, they all assume we are using neural networks. However, like in some cases, an actual boost is also very powerful. On top of the has sets, this is under 10K examples. Because three, three studies have proved that an actual boost can also perform neural network on small, medium sized data sets. And also in addition, in the industry, there is a growing need to deploy a federal actual boost on tasks such as survival analysis and financial threat detection. And so these situations raise the need and to train a federal actually boost. And the current research on federal actually boost mainly defines two settings. The first one is the horizontal one. In this setting, clients' data sets have identical feature space but different sample IDs. The central server sends the global models to all clients and they aggregate them, update the model parameters after each communication run. In the vertical setting, the concepts of passive parties and one actual party were introduced, where passive parties and actual parties share identical simple space, but, but, different, uh, but different feature space. And as only the active party has a data labels, it's naturally access in the server. And both settings have practical applications. One example of the horizontal application is in the healthcare industry, and where multiple hospitals have distinct patient IDs, but share the same features like and blood test results or medical history. And by collaborating, they can train a model to predict a, a, a patient's disease outcome. And on the other hand, and one example of a vertical setting can be found in the financial industry. The central bank and the credit reporting agencies have shared customer IDs but different features. Uh, for example, like account history or credit history. And by training together, and they can and train a credit scoring model on all clients and to predict the financial risks. Uh, financial risks. And our work focused on a more common setting, which is the horizontal setting. And although the horizontal setting remains to be more common, the training of a horizontal fire actually boost actually turns out to be harder. To understand why we need to reveal the fundamentals of the actual boost. Actual boost is an additive, uh, additive assemble model. It adapts forward stage-wise regression and constantly considers new trees to fix the residue of the previous tree until a stop condition is met. Suppose there are M trees in our tree assemble and given a data point xi, the final prediction is given by summing, summing the predictions of all M trees with a fixed learning rate eta, which is uh, this, uh, this symbol looks like N. And this figure provides an, provides an example for better understanding. We have a regression task in which we want to predict the daily food consumption of a dog. And we have two trees in our, in our tree assemble. And we add the predicted outcomes and of all two, of all these two trees to give the uh, to give the results of one single dog, for example, the dog type uh, number two and dog type number four. And the trend of action boost is done in an additive in a sequential manner, which means the tree ft plus one is always trained after the tree ft. And to train a single tree, we first calculate the first uh, the first order gradient and the second order hashings of all data samples as shown in equation three. And from the root to leaf nodes, the best splitting points can be found in equation two, 
by, in, by maximizing this thing called the split scan. The split scan, as everyone knows, is calculated with regards to the sums of the gradients and the sums of hashings of all the hard points. And then we partition the gradients and the hashings into the left and the right and of the, the node to find uh, according to the splitting points feature constraint. Yeah, so why is the training of a horizontal federal section boost harder? This is because this is because finding the optimal split condition of a single tree depends on the order of the data samples. As we see in equation two, we iterate the feature sets and the partition that they hide into left and right according to feature constraints. Therefore, as the clients share the same simple ideas in the vertical setting, the possible parties only need to share the order of the data samples to the actual party, without revealing the actual values of the gradient and the hashings. And however, since the sample IDs are different across all clients in the horizontal setting, in other words, the instance set IJ is decentralized across all clients. So at every speaking point, each class needs to transmit the gradient hashings and sample space and conditions based on the future constraint to a server to find the optimal splitting condition. And only in this way, we can know the partition of the data samples into left and right for each class unique simple ID to calculate the global GO and GR and the global um, H HO and HR required by, uh, required by equation two. And consequently, by sharing gradients and hashings, we, we, identify, we, we identify two problems that must be solved. The first problem is the Pernod level communication frequency. The server needs to communicate with all clients at every, every speaking point. Then we denote, we, de we denote the depth of each tree as L and the number of trees in a tree assembled as M. The number of nodes in a tree assembled as scale up to M to, to N times two to the power of L, and so is the number of communication runs. As a train action boost model is common to have a depth of eight and 500 trees, the number of communication runs can reach up to 100,000. Moreover, in, a real, in a real applications of feather action boost, it is possible for a server to collect more than one out of, one, one of communication runs um, per, per node because we need to uh, carry out extra cryptographic calculations to protect the privacy. So this high communication overhead is unacceptable, is unacceptable for practical uses of actual boost. And the second concern is the serious privacy issue. The sharing of gradients is proved to be insecure by previous works because uh, the data can be reconstructed by sharing the gradients and hashings, uh, which violates the core principle of better learning, which is the privacy protection. Yeah, so in this work, we ask the fundamental question, if it's, if, if it's, it's possible not to rely on the sharing of gradients and hashings you know, to construct a horizontal federal action boost. And in this way, we can simultaneously decrease the uh, panel level combination frequency and also boost up the privacy concern, uh, the privacy protection. We find, it's, we find it to be possible by formulating two important insights. And the first one is, as local clients think us as a genius, each tree makes different amounts of mistakes. And in this case, using a fixed learning rate may be too weak. Consider the example in this figure. We have an extra boost uh, model with M trees, and the model is trained on data set for regression task. We send this extra boost model to two other clients and evaluate on their respective local data sets. And now we observe the prediction outcomes of the first, of the, of the first three trees in the tree assemble. And given two data points from the data, data, data sets one and two respectively, and they have the same back, and they have the same ground truth, which is 100. And for the first tree F1, it gives a good initial prediction for X for data, for data points XB, but not for data points XA. And the second and the third tree, on the other hand, they, suffi they sufficiently correct, correct the error made by the first tree in the case for XA, but not for XB. So in this case, we may want a higher, higher running rate uh, for, for the tree F, uh, F, F2 and F3 and for data points X1, but a, but a lower learning rate for tree F2 and F3 for data points XB. So in this case, a fixed learning rate is too weak. And our second insight is that the data heterogeneity causes the train X boost model on different clients' local data sets to convert to a local optima that is far away from each other. And the consequently, Given an anything they have sample, this extra boost tree sample outputs different prediction outcomes. However, among all tree samples, some can give more accurate predictions compared to others because the underlying, underlying distribution of the, of the anything data points 
will be closer to some distribution. So in this case, we may want to apply weighted sum on all kinds on, on all on all three sample prediction outcomes. This is worth noting that this approach is also used by federated average and federated prox uh, in the same way as the aggregates the model parameters. And in their work, they have given theoretical convergence for uh, for the for the approach of using weighted, weighted average. So to facilitate our into our insights. The, the final prediction results giving an arbitrary data, data sample with feature dimension D is calculated by the weighted sum of all trees from all clients as shown in this figure. Each vertical tree chain is a tree sample built by one client where W is the learning rate assigned to each tree and the ZK is a, is a weight applied to balance each uh, tree sample's prediction outcome. We refer to this system as an aggregated tree sample. But now we have one question. That says, how do we make the make the learning rates of everything uh, learnable during the training of actually boosts? And we find we can make this possible by transforming the aggregated tree samples into a one layer 1D convolutional neural network. In the first 1D convolutional layer, the, the inputs are the, prediction, are the prediction outcomes of all tree samples. This small size model is interpretable. The kernel size and the stride of the 1D convolution are equal to the number of trees in each, in each client tree assemble. Thus, each channel of the 1D convolution can, can be understood as a learning rate that can be applied. And the number of channels is the total number of learning rate strategy, strategies and that we can apply and serve, as a back, and serve as a backup. And the classification head, which is, the fully, which is a fully connected layer, contains the weighting factor ZK to balance the, to, to, to balance the prediction outcomes of all clients' uh, spilled tree assemble. And here is our full pipeline. Each client, uh, in the left part, each client first train first trains its local actual train model, and the server then aggregates and and initializes the CN model. After receiving the aggregated tree samples, all clients calculate the prediction outcomes given the aggregated tree sample on their local data samples, and then the and, and then uh, the prediction outcomes and are, are used to are, are used to and train the one DCNN. It is, it is worth noting that the clients only need to build the expose tree assemble uh, as round one, and the aggregated tree assemble is fixed after round one. Uh, for the for, for the federated training of the 1D1 layer CNN, um, we use the federated averaging, which is the most basic and standard uh, actual protocols. And finally, uh, the trained global federated actual model contains all clients locally and um, builds actual boost models and the, and the globally trained 1D1 layer CNN. And we we'll name our approach as FED LLR, which stands for a federated action boost model with learnable learning rates. And compared to previous methods, our approach offers two key advantages. The first one is privacy protection. The clients only need to share the constructed tree symbol to a server. The sharing of the greatest and hashes which may leak sensitive information is not required. The second is a, is a much lower communication overhead because our method is our method and the, and the induced overhead is independent of a data set size and any hyperparameter related to a train actually boost. And in practice, we'll find 10 communication rounds to be sufficient for our model to, to reach the performance comparable to a state of the art method. And when one question is, and some people may argue that the sharing of a tree model also, also leak privacy. However, we think that in the case of federal, in, in the case of federal learning, in, in, in any way, we, we are sharing the global model. So the privacy con the sort of privacy concern of sharing the tree assemble is much less than sharing the gradients. And that's all for and that's all for the method. And now I will give a brief uh, a brief overview, a, a short demo of the code uh, which is released to Flower community. Yeah, so this code is uh, is the same one as the one that released on the on the Flower. And this one is the same uh, Google code app file. Uh, so to so to run this piece of code, you only need to uh, to click each block. Because yeah, okay, yeah. So we we already set up uh, every uh, every every environment uh, for Python. So you do not need to set up uh, anything by yourself. Yeah. So uh, uh, so now I will go over each block, and the first block is the is the setup environment, and I will skip them for now because I already installed the environments on my local machine. And then we will import every modulus um, for training. 
and and also 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 this one. And then this block is all utility all utility functions, and that will be used for to to train a federal attribute boost. And some of them are more, more important, and some of them are less important. And I will come back to this block later. And and here we, we will select the data sets we want to use. And here I select the task type to be binary classification and the data sets to be called RNA. And then we um, when then we pro pre-processed um, pre-processed uh, uh, the data sets. And in this block, we will do the federated linear partitioning um, for, for all clients. And then we will define the hyperparameters uh, for the for the federated learning. And here I define the number of clients to be five, and the number of tree samples in each client to be one hundred. And then in this section, for comparison purpose, we first build a global attribute model on all clients' data sets, and we can see the task the task accuracy is around 0 0.9, 0 0.966. And then we also simulate the attributes uh, model on each client's local data sets. And we can see that the accuracy is slightly lower and around 0 0.96. And, and following this, we will define the CNN, uh, which is used to train the learnable learning rates. And we'll also uh, define the training and the test, fun the, the test function here. And then we'll define our customized FU cli uh, uh, flower client. And, and what's really what's really important is that we we'll make revisions to the initializations of the clients, uh, which we have the, the, the each client's um, tra the train loader, test loader, the CID, also the trees which will be constructed from the from local data sets. And we'll also overwrite the get uh, parameters parameters and the set parameters function. Because we also need to share the tree examples in addition to those CNN's, CNN's uh, model parameters. And then after this, we'll define our customized uh, FUO server. Uh, in this section, we'll mainly uh, make revisions and, and to the function called, uh, called freeze run and, and the guest initial parameters because we need to share the tree examples. And other all follow the, all follow the, the, the default uh, code of the Flower framework. And finally, we will define our customized server-side evaluation function to do evaluation. And then we can define our static, start experiments function to train our file tech boost. Yes, and at the very end, when we can click this block and to run our code. And, and I, I already ran the code uh, to, to save time. And then we can see that after, after uh, 20 rounds, the final accuracy uh, achieved something around uh, 0 0.964, which is higher than the local the, the locally built actually boost model and slightly lower than global um, built actually boost. Yes, and, and also uh, one final thing that you can access this piece of code uh, by clicking the flower example, the quick start example, uh, file actually boost. And there, there's also a, a blog post which you can read to get a better insight and for explanation. Yeah, and that's all for my talk and, and thank you for your time. That was wonderful. Not only did you have a talk, but you also had this uh, great code walkthrough, which we, we know that many people will enjoy so they can see both like what's the concept, but also how do they, um, how can they easily take that concept and start to use it themselves? So it's really cool. Thank you so much, Danny.